looks like we are live. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is LZ from BNB Chain, and I'll be your host of today. Today is a very interesting session that Chain ID is hosting. So it'll be master classes on actually on blockchain security, and we have two very esteemed guests invited to the session. I do not want to take up too much of their time. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Professor Wang Zihua from University of British Columbia, and he will give you a very insightful lesson on blockchain security. Good evening, Prof Wang. How's everything going? Hi, uh, thank you for the intro. Um, I'm good. Um, so very glad to uh, be here. Yeah, likewise. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. So um, I, will let, I will let you start. Thank you. OK, cool. Uh, I need to uh, find out how to uh, share my screen. Uh, give me a second. Uh, share these two monitors and share. OK, so right now I can choose uh, my application. So uh, could you please acknowledge you can see my sharing screen? Yep, um, we can see it. OK, perfect. Cool. Um, very glad to be here. And then thank you for the invitation from both the BNB and um, White Matrix. Um, I'm Dr. Zhaohua Wang. Um, I'm a founder of the Verilog Audit. Uh, it's an auditing firm. And also, I'm a professor in the ECE department at the University of British Columbia. Uh, I designed the uh, blockchain courses in the UBC, uh, including the foundation of blockchain and also the blockchain software engineering. And then myself was a programmer before. Uh, I started code in uh, with Solidity uh, since the version 0 0.3, and right now it's uh, 0 0.8. Um, so um, I presently experienced the uh, the the virgin uh, evolution of the Solidity and the smart contracts. So uh, I, I'm very happy uh, to be here and to share some of my opinion in the security in DeFi. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, so what's a DeFi? Um, this is um, is a hot topic. Uh, I think that most of the audience and in uh, watching this uh, video or this live stream should know uh, what the DeFi is. Um, but uh, uh, one word in the nutshell about the DeFi is that the uh, it's just a financial service system in the uh, blockchain. Um, because like we have the banks, we have those mortgages, we have those um, the, the 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 stocks, or we can also have those options, or basically. Most of those existing uh, financial services, we can build that in the blockchain by using smart contracts. And then uh, <clears throat> with a smart contract, we can write down the uh, business uh, uh, lo the business logic, right? Um, because every people uh, have the um, you know every person has the uh, the wallet. Uh, it can be the uh, plugin in MetaMask or it can be the hardware wallet, then you can interact with the code on the uh, blockchain. And you can also transfer the tokens, then you can uh, stake the tokens, you can uh, provide the liquidity, and you can um, uh, you know, um, uh, mine new tokens as a reward if you put the liquidity or if you trade on this um, um, financial platform, then you will be given some reward. Uh, so basically, then we have uh, replicated the some of those uh, modern financial system on the blockchain, and some featured ones include the the DAX, the decentralized exchange, and then we can uh, have the uh, very well known um, the DAX like the Uniswap, and then the uh, the forks of Uniswap in different chains, uh, or we also have. Um, uh, other can and we have different market making um, model right uh you know the amm is one of them but right now then we also have like the total dex we have um um other um uh, market maker uh, models and we do have lending protocols uh, like rv um yeah so you can deposit some uh, assets in the rv like the collateral then you can uh, borrow some money out 
We also have the bound model. Um, for example, in the uh, Olympus style, uh, you can uh, basically you can uh, buy some um, uh, uh, the OM token, um, or you can also buy some other tokens by uh, you know first deposit your assets, and then um, you need to wait maybe two weeks until then you will be given this uh, the, the the token. Right, but usually then you can uh, purchase the token by waiting two weeks. Then you can buy this token uh, with uh, a lower price comparing with the market. And we also have the option products uh, like the uh, Lyria or uh, Premia. Uh, it's a, basically uh, it's very similar to the um, option uh, services in our uh, current modern uh, financial system. Uh, for example, you can. Uh, you you have the right, but not the obligation, and to buy or sell some token as the some um, some uh, some um, uh, price. Okay, uh, according to you are in the money or out of the money, then you can uh, determine. And if you want to apply your right, and then you can earn some um, uh, revenue by using this option. So all of those stacks, lending, bond, option. Uh, they were in the traditional, I would say, okay, the concept, they were in the traditional financial services, but right now then we have moved them into the blockchain by using the smart contracts. But uh, um, DeFi is uh, even better than the tradition, uh, the traditional financial services. Like, you know, most, uh, most of you should know the flash loan. The flash loan is that uh, you do not even need to provide the collateral for your loan because uh, you borrow this money and then you will uh, return this money directly in the same uh, transaction. The same transaction, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the same series of transactions. Yeah, so you can borrow some money from, for example, from Avi, okay, without any collateral. And then you can use this personal money in the same theories of transactions to do some trillings and eventually you need to pay whatever you borrow out back to you. Uh, so this flash loan is, uh, it does not exist in the traditional uh, financial system because most of the case, when you want to borrow money from the bank, you need to give the collateral, even uh, like your house, your car, uh, or some other uh, valuable assets. But the flash loan is his only, is something definitely new in, uh, in DeFi. And because of that, then we do have a, uh, some vulnerabilities. It's called the flash loan attack. Uh, later on, you will see uh, more examples about the flash loan attack. So this is a DeFi. So why DeFi is, is um, it's, uh, we have so many uh, hacking events in DeFi because in the smart contract, uh, it saves a lot of money in the smart contract. Okay, and then we need to uh, do some uh, arithmetic calculations. We have those functions and to determine what's the return rate Okay, and then what's the um, the APY, and then uh, people can mine more tokens. Or if I want to be a liquidity provider, I need to uh, provide both tokens as a pair into the liquidity pool. Uh, you can see that there is a lot of money. There is a huge amount of assets in the smart contracts, and then um, <clears throat> and then the hackers would like to use the uh, vulnerabilities or bugs. Or even the uh, some uh, corner cases in the smart contract to try to uh, take the advantage from the smart contract, okay? Or get or get the uh, undeserved profit from uh, exploiting the smart contracts. So with today's topic, I um, want to list this uh, five of the issues in the uh, DeFi, okay? So the first is the incorrect liquidity pool calculation. Uh, you will see that um, for some of those uh, decentralized exchange, um, so you know that the, the, in the decentralized exchange, um, if you want to do the trade, so there must be a liquidity inside the uh, DAX, okay? Uh, so if I want to be the liquidity provider, I need to 
provide liquidity for a pair of the tokens. So um, if somebody is buying some uh, the token A and then by selling this token B into this pool, basically I will be the seller. Okay, I'll sell token A to the uh, token A buyer, and then I receive the token B and pay the buy that um, token buyer. So uh, then there must be the uh, some um, me me mechanism in the smart contract to calculate the price or calculate the uh, three page and to uh, find out so what's the amount of token and should be uh, granted after receiving the corresponding uh, the, uh, the, the, the the token to be traded in. Um, and then, yeah, so some, uh, some, uh, some code, later on you will see some examples. So you will see that uh, if we um, did not calculate the, uh, the correct, the correct uh, price, of this token A versus B, then the, some hackers can use the flash loan attack and then to take a huge advantage from the pool. And we do how this situation happened in the BIC, the Binance Smart Chain, including the um, the the, the um, pancake swap uh, penny um, token uh, hack, and also we do have another one. It's called uh, the burger swap. Okay, we, 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 we had that issues happen in the BSC before. Um, and we second, another category about the security is the stolen of the unleaked private key. Um, you know, uh, every wallet is a private key and from the private key and then is we have the public key. But the public key is not your address. The hash of your public key with the with the first 160 bit of the hashing result of the public key actually is your uh, wallet uh, in the in the in the in the EVM uh, where in all of those uh, Ethereum compatible um, chains. So as long as then you know that the private key is actually the very it's actually the first of a very large value. Okay, that value is used for signing a transaction. Then if somebody takes your private key, basically the person has um, the uh, total control of your wallet. You can send the money out. But why is related with DeFi? Because uh, some of those DeFi contracts, they do have the privilege functions. Um, in the, even in the Open Zeppelin library, there is the ownable um, interface, okay, or ownable contracts. So there is an owner and will be initialized by whoever con you know, uh, building or deploying the smart contracts, and only those owner IDs or the the wallets can change or call some specific functions. So sometimes it's good because we we can do some token rescue. You know, we can uh, uh, lock some malicious account. But uh, also, if uh, this private key of that account is leaked out, then it makes the DeFi protocol be very vulnerable and it may, and the hacker is able to drain all of those assets in the smart contract out, okay? So another level of the security is the pro access control. And similar to this, um, the, the private key leakage, um, if somebody can bypass the, um, uh, the authority or authentication check in the smart contract, then the hacker is somehow able to transfer the tokens or assets in the smart contract out. This is not, um, it's also a, not a, um, a very uh, pleasant experience, but we do have these situations happen in the DeFi world. And also give you some example later. A front running attack is uh, you know um, all the transactions will be uh, transmitted out by using the peer to in the peer to peer network. For example, if I sign a transaction and then by using my MetaMask, and then this transaction is the first sent to the portal of MetaMask. So MetaMask will maintain a lot a lot of those peers and then in this peer to peer network. And then when I sign a transaction, my signed transaction is first sent to one of those uh, access nodes or portal nodes uh, of MetaMask. And where this transaction will be broadcasted to the uh, entire blockchain ecosystem. Okay. And then this transaction will not be directly mined. It will be received by other miners. And the first goes into this mining pool. And those miners, according to my gas price, it will select those um, okay, valuable transactions uh, to mine first. So that's why then if you give a higher gas price, your transaction is mined first. 
Um, but the front running is that, okay, if I'm the miner and I see, okay, I can make some profit. I can take advantage of mining another transaction in front of this transaction in my trans in my pending transaction pool, then it is very easy for a miner and to just inject another um, um, transaction and with a higher transaction fee than your transaction. So, and then eventually when your transaction is kept into this uh, block, then um, this uh, front runner and it can take the advantage of of the system and then earn money from uh, your transaction. Okay, it's the front running attack. And the very last one, we have the rock pool and the uh, Ponzi schemes. Uh, we do have this situation like in the history, uh, rock pool means that um, uh, some backdoor in the smart contract enables the, uh, the, the owner of this project, okay, or deploy or the programmer of this project uh, steal all of the tokens in the smart contract. Uh, it's very bad, okay, and then it's just very frustrating, um, but we did have the situation happen before. And for all of those um, uh, securities, uh, security issues I just mentioned, then I will give you uh, some examples and also give you the lessons. So what the lesson that we can learn from the hacking events and then, and then just uh, uh, help you to uh, learn the best practice or no matter if you are a um, uh, DeFi project owner or if you are just a, a personal investor, then uh, we can learn some lesson from those hacking events. So that will be the, um, the main purpose for <laughs> this online lecture. Okay, let's come into uh, more details. Uh, the incorrect liquidity pool calculation, uh, I just want to mention two of them. We do have more. At least in the last year, in 2021, we had a four or five, this kind of uh, flash loan attack. And just, uh, just uh, put two of them here. One is the Pancake Bunny protocol hack on, in the May of 2021. Another one is the, uh, the uh, Burger Swap protocol hack. Uh, yes, because I'm sharing the screen just uh, with my uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, if I just uh, click this link and then uh, you probably cannot uh, see the web page. So what I, will, what I need to do is that I will first open the web page and then switch my sharing screen from my PowerPoint to my web browser. So give me a second. Okay, I will try to stop the sharing and let me share another one. Okay, I will put this web page in a new window and share share screen. So here's this one. Okay, so I guess right now then you can uh, you can see this. Yeah, this is the the the, the bounty token hack. Um, so the, um, uh, the, the 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 guy posts a series of study about why this how this hack uh, this uh, hack happens. Um, so let's just uh, quickly go through this, and then um, I'm not sure then if. Um, let me just paste this one in the chat. I'm not sure if uh, uh, you can click this link. I just uh, paste this web page uh, URL into the chat. It's a private chat. Or is... Yeah, anyway, then uh, you can just remember this ID or uh, remember this guy's name. Um, it's Igor. Um, so this is it, it, this is a slide that described how this happen uh, how this attack happens. So this uh, added a small number of sites to the um, uh, Bunny USDT and the WBNB wallet. So this is very important. Uh, later on, then this hack basically is try to let the BNB uh, liquidity pool believe that this person has contributed a lot of liquidity. So they, they, this person will eventually be given a lot of the the the, the USDT and then uh, WBNB value when he removes the liquidity. 
but uh, this one is um, about how how you can make this smart contract believe that you have provided a lot of liquidity if you do not have that amount of money. That's the flash loan. Uh, how to use a flash loan is actually very easy. You can just uh, use a smart contract and uh, you, can, you can just write a smart contract. And in this smart contract, you have a function. In this function, you call a bunch of other functions. Right, because uh, all of those um, the 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 DAX, the decision applications, they have those interface. They can you can just call the functions by using a smart contract, and then you combine all of those smart contract uh, smart contracts calling in the same function. You just run that function, then everything is well triggered together in the bunch of transactions or a series contract um, transactions. So it's first borrow some, um, uh, you can see that, it's borrowed a lot of money from the flash loan. And then it's borrowed uh, this uh, WBNB, a lot of WBNB, and also it's borrowed some the BU, uh, BUSD. It's uh, just the, it's the stable coin in the uh, BIC. Uh, it's a lot of money there. And so right now this person has a lot of BNB and a lot of USDT uh, in Binance Smart Chain. And so it's the add, um, not all of those uh, borrow the BNB, the person add a uh, uh, 7.7K BNB, and then all of those borrow the USDT and to provide the liquidity to the USDT and WBNB pool in the PancakeSwap. So it's provide a lot of liquidity to this uh, PancakeSwap liquidity pool. And then it's a swap the 2003, because um, you can just roughly count the uh, the, the borrowed amount of BNB is just uh, far more than 7.7K. And uh, for the rest of those uh, BNB, not yet put in into the liquidity, it will just uh, sell all of those BNB for USDT. So it's just dump a lot of BNB into this pool. Um, so it will change this, um, the, 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 it will basically it's drain, uh, drain out all of the, the USDT inside the pool. And then, and the BNB inside the pool, it goes very large. Okay, and then it's means because it's a put a lot of, uh, it's, it, it did a lot of uh, swapping, then it's mean the seven million bunny and then using a set from the first step because, but the, because of the extra, uh, the liquidity, uh, the RP uh, tokens in the packing swap pool, the bunny finance believe that this exploiter uh, added a large amount of BNB. So this is the most most important uh, step in this hack. So eventually it shows the 4.8 million bunny and the 4.2.3 million WBNB and then this is a 2.9 million UIDT and then then pay all of the flash loan back. So you can see that it's a, it takes out the flash loan and directly uh, save all the flash uh, saves back. Okay, okay, repay the flash loan in the same, in the same block. Okay, okay, it's actually just the same transaction because it's write all of those transactions in the function of the smart contract. Maybe okay. Okay, and then eventually you can see that. So why this flash loan can change this uh, price very much? Because there is, um, uh, you can see that this uh, this is the function. Eventually, it actually is a mint uh, for v two. It's a mint for bunny. It's a, it is the minting contract for the bunny token. And then in this one, the first argument is the number of BNB and the bunny BNB token. And this one goes into this argument is is the assets. But eventually, you can see that this uh, I. Uh, it's a inter. It's, it's the uh, the pancake pair with this um, address asset total supply because this person has deposited a lot of quite a lot of um, uh, you know put put a lot of assets into this address. So this value goes very large. When this value goes very large, and then this value in the BNB is very very small. So this is uh, the found by the uh, pack shield. And then the root cause was that the hacker could manipulate the bending minting price. So if this bending minting price is very low, then this person can mean a lot of bending token out. Okay. So this is the very general description for the um, first hack that we are learning today is the um, pancake swap uh, bending hack.
Okay, so let me come back to the other one. So the other one, it is this burger swap protocol hack, but uh, it is exactly the same routine. Almost, almost I, I, I probably cannot say exactly the same uh, because uh, the, uh, in the burger swap protocol, the hacker creates a fixed token and then use uh, two token pairs, okay? And with the fake token in the, as the middle, uh, I, I, as the uh, medium, okay? So it can still manipulate the price of a valuable token. Okay, let me just uh, quickly go through this. Okay, is the uh, burger swap? Okay, so uh, unfortunately, this uh, burger swap is also on BSC um, because uh, today is the BSC uh, session. So I would like to introduce some of uh, this uh, events in BSC. Um, so uh, almost the same, um, the same logic. Okay. Um, Okay, you can see this. Okay, by adjusting this uh, routing, the hacker create the uh, some burger token. Burger token is the native token of this burger swap, and then to some fake token, and the fake token to this uh, the wrapped the, the wrapped B, the BNB uh, routing, and then uh, through the burger to the fake token trading pair hacker attacker, and then can uh, uh, re-enter this uh, burger swap through the fake token and the manipulated number of uh, reserve zero and reserve one in a pair of contracts causing the price to change. And so here is the main, the main step. So uh, using the web BNB and as the example to illustrate the details of this hack, a hacker flash uh, swap the 6,000 um, WBNB 2 million and from the pancake swap and then swap almost all the WBNB to the 92,000 burger to a uh, burger swap. And here's a detailed uh, transaction events and the monitored uh, captured from this, um, the, 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 the BIC scan. Um, and eventually it's just the, um, um, eventually that in the, in the total, the in total hacker receives this um, 80, uh, 8,800 WBNB and then swap this for 93 and that would be in the wrong this value of um, uh, a burger and eventually pay back out of flash loan. So the flash loan attack is basically try to take the uh, advantage of smart contract code and to manipulate the price of the uh, the tokens, okay, in the liquidity pair. And with that, uh, the hacker can um, make some profit from this hack. Okay, uh, I see there are some uh, chat in the um, chat room. So, um, LZ, so is there any problem about the screen sharing? Um, nothing at all. Please continue. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so what's a lesson that we can learn from this previous to hacking events? So those are the lessons. Um, so for for this um, uh, burger, uh, for the burger swap hack, so it's mainly involves ensuring that uh, and hackers should not manipulate the exchange rate between the different tokens on the protocol. Uh, both of those uh, hacks using this vulnerability in the smart contracts. And to prevent this, the, uh, the Bunny protocol and while no longer calculate the value of a swap internally, is that they plan to use the chain link contract in their token price oracle to determine a fair price for each asset. Uh, it is very important because uh, if you just purely determine the price with your local domain, then uh, so what's actually the, the flash loan attack? 
It's nothing more than an arbitrary trading, but uh, the hacker just uh, manually produced some arbitrary trading opportunities. So by using the flash loan and the hackers can just uh, produce this kind of arbitrary trading opportunities and then use this opportunity and then this hacker produced to attack this smart contract. Um, so uh, to avoid this arbitrary trading, you would like to know the fair market price of the token, not just uh, use the local algorithm to determine this token price, which is very traditional in all of those MM, um, uh, the, the um, automated market maker, right? Because we are using this the, the inverse function and to calculate what's the price one, the token versus the other one. Uh, so it is... Um, it is actually uh, very, very normal in uh, the, the, the traditional decentralized exchanges. So using some uh, Oracle like Chainlink to have the fair market price is actually very useful to avoid this kind of attack. And this use of in internal price Oracle is a common mistake in DeFi that has resulted in a number of expensive hacks against these protocols. Identifying and eliminating errors like this is a critical part of a security audit of the DeFi smart contract. Because the liquidity is actually the foundation of the DeFi. Okay, you know, we, we, we know that because without liquidity, then we do not have the DEX. Okay, without the DEX, then uh, it's, 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 it's in the meaningless to have the lending protocols. So anyway, uh, so this is the first lesson we learned and from this uh, incorrect liquidity pool calculation. The next one is uh, a little bit easier than the uh, previous uh, slash flash loan attack, the stolen and the leaked private key. Uh, there's an event in uh, two years ago, actually it's just uh, not almost one year ago, it's uh, December 14th. Um, Nexus um, neutral report a hack targeting is CEO um, uh, Hugh Carp. And so this is um, uh, this hacking. Uh, so this hacker that steals this CEO's private key in these three steps. First is um, uh, the hacker again the remote control of the CEO's computer and they use this remote control access to change out the MetaMask extension within uh, the CEO's browser with a malicious version. Um, so uh, it's very crucial for the, uh, for your um, DeFi investors. Make sure then your MetaMask is uh, the uh, correct one. Do not use any uh, MetaMask, then download it from the third party uh, uh, website. And using this malicious extension, the hacker was able to change the transaction and being performed and signed by the CARP to one uh, that sent uh, the, uh, the 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 native token to a hacker's control address. So this is the um, I, uh, this is the address. Um, give me a second. I I shall show that in the. I think it should be clickable. I'm not sure why this link is not clickable. Um, but let me just paste that into the my web browser. I'm still using this one. And then I can share a screen and share this window. Okay. So this is the link, and then, then in my slides. So you can see that this is a fake phishing. This is another just a, I just give this uh, address attack. So this happened in the, um, uh, 2020, December the 14th. Um, so um, um, this um, this is the hacking event. So, cause um, the uh, the person the carp has already transferred the uh, token to the malicious address, so the uh, hacker can just uh, steal all of the token out, and it has been reported and has been analyzed, and this has the tag is a fake phishing uh, accounts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> so after seeing these uh, tokens, the hacker began using this uh, one interaction to convert it to the user. 
um, cause um, if uh, if one person has still a lot of the ER20 token, and then it's better to just swap your ER20 token back to Ether, which is the the, the 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 native coin in the Ethereum, so it's free to transfer this um, Ether out. So what's the lesson that we kind of going to learn this? So if you are a DeFi user or if you are a DeFi developer, try to use the hardware wallet. Uh, the MetaMask is has it can generate uh, some uh, uh, private key as the inside the extension, and you can easily uh, communicate with those uh, blockchains like the BIC or Ethereum uh, blockchain, or uh, or all of other um, blockchains. But the hardware wallet is just more secure. The reason is that the uh, private key for your extension for the MetaMask, uh, the MetaMask saves your private key. Uh, if um, uh, some malicious software or some uh, uh, hacking technology may, may be able and to steal those private key in the, from the extension, if somebody got the uh, your uh, totally remote control of your computer, then the private key is just uh, leaked out. But the hardware wallet is something different. Um, the entropy on the hardware is just unique. And with that entropy and your hardware wallet uh, can produce those private keys. And your private key is never live from your hardware wallet. And so it can, and whenever a transaction needs to be signed, the transaction data is transmitted to the uh, hardware wallet, is signed there and transmit the signed message out back to your computer and send it to the network. So this makes your hardware wallet much better, much safer than your MetaMask. And then we ran out most of those hardware wallet users, they use the uh, Trezor and then they, uh, they also use the Ledger. So personally, I have both of them and then they use the, 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 the experience uh, of using both uh, kind of uh, hardware wallets is very similar. It's very easy to use. And you also can set a password for your uh, hardware wallet. It's the better way to protect your crypto assets. Okay, so this is the lesson we learned. So just try not using the, um, the, 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 the MetaMask. So think about this problem here. Okay, if the, if the transaction is signed by using this, um, the hardware wallet, Okay, then um, definitely the uh, MetaMask cannot be, uh, even though, okay, so you have, you met, you MetaMask cannot change the, um, the, uh, the, the, the sign information. But uh, yeah, so if uh, the hacker change the original info or the raw message to be signed, then it's another problem. Then even in that, so in that case, yeah, so if we, for example, if I if I were a hacker, I can change the raw the 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 the, the raw message okay, to be signed. Then I can also change the recipient address. But uh, anyway, using the hardware wallet is somehow then can uh, reduce the vulnerabilities or reduce these kind of risks. And we have another uh, kind of attack is a poor access control. Many DeFi smart contracts include the privilege functions, just like the ownable okay, and you have the owner. Um, and in some cases, these access controls are missing or implemented in a way that allows a hacker to bypass them. And some recent examples of such vulnerabilities are the uh, Poly Network and Punk Protocol hacks. We do have those links given here. Uh, there are two functions inside this um, uh, is cross chain data contracts. The first con the first function in this contract is the put current epoch. Um, uh, it says uh, some function name con uh, the public key bytes function, and this function then can be executed with a call to verify uh, to verify header and execute transaction in this uh, smart contract. So the, uh, the, the, the main purpose of this hacker is that the hacker sends a special formatted command to this function and which reassigned its keeper role to them. And from there, they could join the value from the protocol. A detailed um, uh, explanation is given here. So let me just uh, paste this into the chat. So due to the limited time, I cannot go through the entire article in Medium. Um, Windows tab is 
Okay, it's here. So the root cause of um, uh, poly network being hacked is the article here. Um, so if you're interested, you can just um, uh, pay, pay, uh, um, pay attention to, to this. Um, but uh, the detail of the hack just goes through this quickly. Okay? Uh, the core of this hack is that the uh, this function is function of this smart contract and it can access specific cross-chain transactions through this um, execute cross-chain transaction uh, function. And since the owner of this contract, you know, this, this, this contract is ownable. The owner of this contract is um, this um, manager contract. So uh, it can be uh, done in two ways. One is that I can use this, this contract to deploy a contract like this um, uh, of this Ether cross-chain data contract, or I can just transfer the ownership to this um, uh, Ether cross-chain manager contract. And this manager contract can modify the keeper of the contract by calling this function and then uh, inside this contract. And the verify header and execute transaction function of the this manager contract can perform user specific cross chain transaction by calling this cross chain transaction function internally. So the hacker only needs to pass in the careful constructed data through this verify header and actual transaction function for this cross chain transaction function. And then this um, um, transaction and to execute the call to this uh, Ether cross chain data contracts. And then it's going eventually to change the keeper role to the address specified by the hacker. And after replacing this address of the role keeper, the hacker can contract can uh, construct a, a transaction as well and withdraw all the amounts of funds from the, from this contract. It's the Polygon uh, network hacking event. Another one is a punk protocol. The punk protocol um, attacker exploit a set control issue within the project smart contracts using the delegate call to run the project's initialized function. And the hacker was able to change the, uh, the, the, the forge address on the smart contract to their own address. Uh, this is a vulnerability inside the smart contract. Because in this smart contract, the, uh, the people can use this delegate call to initialize this contract by using different arguments. So uh, still, give me a second. I'll quickly go through this. Okay, so let me just put this in the chat in case that uh, somebody can just copy this. Oh, here from the pool, if not, okay, okay. Yeah, so this is the attack about the, 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 the um, uh, yeah, so this is the uh, punk protocol um, uh, fire launch uh, instance uh, report. So what's the lesson we're going to learn from this um, two hacking events? So the lesson that we learned from this product access control is that auditing is very necessary. 
So both of the vulnerabilities you have seen in this um, the the, the Pong protocol and also in the previous uh, in the previous attack, those issues can be found by um, by by the auditing. Okay, uh, so by using the auditing, so people can find the vulnerability in the delegate call, and then people can also, can also find that um, if the vulnerabilities of the cross chain transaction and then can be. Uh, can be the target of those uh, exploiters. And another way is to, uh, to for it is uh, using the multi-signature wallet, uh, like the Genosis. Because uh, if you have this owner, just a, a person's um, a private wallet, okay, or, or an individual's wallet, and then uh, basically it is still very vulnerable. Okay? Maybe this wallet is just lost. We cannot just uh, say, okay, this person just executes those uh, transactions purposely, but uh, uh, sometimes if this wallet is lost and then this um, uh, some people get this uh, wallet, and if the wallet is not with a password, then this can be um, can be can be can be uh, used maliciously. Uh, we can use the multi-signature wallet. Uh, Genosis gives you the a uh, very good interface, and uh, for example. Uh, for our five uh, founders and then can create a um, multi-signature wallet. And then you can use this multi-signature wallet to interact with those uh, ownable smart contracts. And the owner of those smart contracts is actually your Genosis wallet. And you can specify what are the ratios of the founders need to sign until this transaction can be uh, executed. So for example, you can if you have four founders or the four stakeholders of your project, you can specify three or four so that uh, our, all of those three persons, they can sign the, uh, this multi-signature wallet by using their MetaMask or using the hardware wallet, as long as this, this threshold is three or four, right? As long as the threshold reaches, and then this transaction is sent from this multi-signature wallet. So it makes your project be more secure, and then you do not need to worry about one person hack your entire, your, your entire project. Okay, and then also build more faith to the to the to the community, because community is so important. And then if you build a project saying that, okay, my project, all of those ownable the owners privilege functions can only be executed by the genosis in the multi signature wallet, it is more trustworthy than um, you know than uh, one single person's uh, personal wallet. And the front running attack, um, I, I think I shall be quick because uh, uh, we will we have another couple of slides and to, to go, but uh, we have uh, just uh, 10 minutes. Front running attack, blockchain do not immediately uh, add transactions to the distributed ledger, uh, just as I explained in the beginning of this slide, uh, beginning of this, uh, uh, of this lecture. The transactions are broadcast to the blockchain network as soon as they are created by uh, but are stored in the memory pool on each blockchain node until they are added to the ledger as a part of this block. Okay, and then uh, I said that if you have the higher gas price of this transaction, uh, then your transaction will be chosen with a higher priority. The gap between this creation of the transaction and its inclusion in the ledger creates the opportunity for the front running attack. In some cases, it is malicious. While in some other cases, like the example I give you today, is the Dodo Dex where the punk crypto hack about the front runs and attempt uh, exploits and then return the stolen token to the exploits protocol. So it's something good. So the uh, the, the the person returned this uh, stolen uh, uh, the tokens back. They hack against this Dodo V2 a crypto uh, crowd uh, crowd pooling smart contract. Took uh, took advantage of a flaw in this main function of the contract. So still, this uh, initial function. This flaw allowed this uh, function to be called multiple times with different parameters. So somehow a little bit similar to the uh, previous um, the, um, the 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 crypto uh, the the punk network the punk pr uh, uh, protocol. Uh, let me just skip this. You can just uh, Google this password and you can find that Dodo Dex smart contract hack. And then what's the lesson that we can learn from this front running attack? So access control bugs are the major issue. Implementing proper access control is essential for smart contract security. And these vulnerabilities will likely have been detected or they are um, uh, remediated during an security auditing. 
So auditing is becomes the standard um, way or standard routine when you launch a DeFi protocol. Okay, no matter what's the smart con what's the chain you are launching your 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 your, your protocol, it can be in BIC or in Manet or in Polygon uh, or in uh, our launch. Okay, so it's a, or 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 in um, um, OSS, uh, uh, Emerald, Paratime. So no, no matter what's the chain, but uh, uh, having uh, your smart contract uh, uh, undergo the uh, security audit is very very important. Okay, and the very last is the rock pools and the the uh, Ponzi schemes. So in some situation, uh, DeFi users are the victims of hacking uh, of the hacks from developers and the owner of the protocol themselves. The rug pool are the uh, regrettable or fair common form of an inside attack. So someone inside a company with the privilege of access to its contract uses its access to drain value uh, from this protocol. And one uh, we have the uh, we have, we have one um, uh, example is the. Um, um, Alfie Crypt, um, Alfie Crypt, okay, it's a rug and pool. So this uh, started in the, it happened in the last year, uh, April. At that time, then one of the founders and the saying that thing reported the case to the investors, but informed them that not, um, uh, not uh, uh, contact the lawyers or law enforcement, as it would delay the recovery process, it's definitely lying. And then the investigation by the firm found that much of the cryptocurrencies uh, invested by the exchange had been extracted and sent through the, um, the timbre and the mixer to make this more difficult to track. Uh, so what's the, rug, what's the lesson we can learn from the rug pool is to be a worry of uh, verification. So you know that in the, no matter what's the chain, in the uh, Ether scan or the BS scan, uh, we do have the verification. And then uh, with with the uh, software engineering, then we can directly verify a smart contract by using this uh, hard hat. Hard hat is um, the, the 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 node module, and then you can just install the uh, hard hat uh, by using the npm. Or you can also use the brownie. Brownie is uh, similar to uh, like the hard hat, but uh, is uh, used in Python. Uh, so hard hat or brownies can easily verify a deployed smart contract. And when you have the smart contract deployed and verified, then as the user of the DeFi protocol, as an investor, I need to check out if this code has any backdoor inside that. So it somehow requires, it somehow requires and the, um, the 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 investor or DeFi user understand the code, but at least uh, you uh, as um, uh, DeFi user you need to mind the uh, auditing report and to make sure this code has the same hash value with that uh, hash value hashtag in that auditing report. So let's make sure then the auditing report uh, audited the same code and being used or or uh, or being interacted with your wallet. And these vulnerabilities will likely have been detected and uh, uh, you know uh, remediated during the audit smart uh, software audit. Okay, and then uh, other other projects also uh, rely upon the unverified linked libraries. This means that this contract would also include the uh, malicious backdoors. Make sure this uh, smart contract only use those uh, standard libraries, the the open zapping libraries, or those um, uh, libraries. Uh, released by those uh, big name uh, auditing firms or the uh, well-known security companies. Before investing, uh, be, before investing in or approving any crypto projects, it's important to do your uh, research. Uh, and then uh, a lot of right now, then you may receive a lot of garbage tokens. So, for example, you you, you do have some uh, ether and in your uh, wallet, or you do have some. Um, um, uh, BNB uh, uh, in the wallet of your uh, BIC, uh, you may receive a lot of those garbage token. Uh, don't uh, don't interact with any of those garbage token. Okay, do not approve anything because it seems like you approve to spend some garbage token, but actually the smart contract may uh, may you know may may ask you to uh, approve some uh, valuable assets uh, like the, um, the 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 BNB or. Uh, the, uh, the 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 B the BUSD. Uh, you you actually do not know um, if you do not check the smart contract. You do not know uh, what's the um, 
approval function, okay, is applied on which token, okay? If you apply this um, approve for some real token or valuable token, then that you may suffer the, uh, the, the loss. So some other materials for the developers in DeFi, uh, we do have some um, the known attacks in the released by the consensus. Um, I think I need to show this a little bit. I know it's about the end of this uh, presentation, but uh, just give me a couple of seconds. Um, share with this. Yeah, so this is the wild page given by the uh, consensus. It's the known attacks, the reinsurance attack. I think the most of you know the reinsurance attack. Now you can just use the um, um, non reinsurance non modifier inside the functions for the token transfer. So it will stop the reinsurance attack. And then from running attack and denial of service attack. Um, so those are the uh, very known attacks. Uh, have been uh, have been detected, and then you can easily uh, avoid them by applying some modifiers or um, be mindful for the um, smart contract programming. Another is the um, the very last one is uh, some tools for the uh, security. Okay, if you are a DeFi developer, you should also know that. Okay, so those tools are used for uh, some basic check. Um, Misereal is a good one. And then besides, there are also, um, I did not mention, it's not me mentioned here, it's called uh, the um, the uh, Echidna. Okay, Echidna is E-C-H, let me just say. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so Echidna is another tool, as it's uh, actually the fast in two. Uh, then you can try to use this uh, Echidna and to test uh, some vulnerabilities or the uh, flaws in the smart contracts. Okay, and then we also have uh, another one, it's called a uh, Slinser. Okay, Slinser is uh, 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 give me a second. How spell that? Uh, Yeah, anyway, um, so it is, um, it's almost the end of this um, presentation now. Yeah, so um, RZ, so is there any questions and then I can take? For sure. So Dr. Wang, I'd like to know a little bit more about the hack that recent ha that happened recently, right? The uni, so um, sorry, OpenSea, the NFT hack. Are you aware of it? Open C attack, right? It just happened yesterday, I believe. Okay. Uh, sorry, I not. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I will check that. So, could you please introduce that a little bit more? Sure, no worries. Um, basically, there's this malicious contract, and like you said, um, there were some signatures that users signed, and that led to their wallets being open to vulnerabilities. So um, I agree with what you said, and I think your sharing was very insightful. So um, we could move on from there, I think. So could I also know a little bit more about very log auditing? Oh yeah, so the very log auditing is um, uh, is a firm then um, that offers the smart contract security services to decentralized applications. So I'm the founder of this very log. 
Um, and then this, uh, the, the, the entire very long outing team is coming from the smart contract developers. Uh, we, uh, all of us, had worked with a lot of DeFi protocols um, and developed a lot of DeFi smart contracts. And the team at the very long understand the need of smart contract developers and developed a better um, aligned auditing business um, model. And we work with our uh, customer um, uh, closely. Okay, it's different from other outing teams. So we, we directly talk with our customer and then we have the daily meeting and then to give the quick response about those, um, uh, about those, uh, the, 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 the bugs or the, um, the, 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 the vulnerable codes. So we give them the daily update. And then we are, we, we, are, we, we are also very responsive for any concerns. So this is the very log auditing. And then I do have this, um, a website. Let me just uh, put the website in the chat. So if possible, and you can share this link to the audience. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for gracing us with your attendance today. So um, without thank further you, ado, thank you. So um, this is a, a very great session hosted by Dr. Wang. And I believe you would, the audiences would have learned a lot from him. So without further ado, let me go into the next guest. We have someone very special. Um, Mr. Malcolm Larida, who is the Overseas Strategy Director at Bilsin. So, hey Malcolm, how's everything going? Um, sorry, I think you're muted. Um, you are currently muted, actually. Hey, Malcolm. I guess he dropped. So um, yeah, let's give him a couple more minutes. Hey, Malcolm. Welcome back. So, so, um, so, 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 hi, uh, hi, everyone. And sorry for that uh, technical mishap. Just at the second where my presentation was supposed to start, uh, uh, the screen just went black over here. But it seems like we are up and running now. So, thank no you for your oh, patience. You. Sorry. Uh, so good evening, everyone, um, or good morning, depending on where you are this day. My name is Malcolm, and I'm the Overseas uh, Strategy Director here at Biosyn, a blockchain security company. I'm here today to talk about smart contract attacks and how we can prevent them from happening. In this presentation, I will first explain 
a few common security risks that we are faced with when developing smart contracts. I will also show you a free to use scanning tool that we call verification as a service that we have developed here in house at Busian. It's free for anyone to use. So if you are a developer uh, developing smart contracts, then I strongly suggest that you hang on to this presentation to at least see the demo that will be showing a little bit later. And after that, I will introduce uh, formal verification. And that's a methodology that we use in our security audits. It's basically a mathematical proof that uh, smart contract code is correct. And we also integrate that in our uh, verification as a service tool to be able to cover all the business logic. I will show a demo on that part as well. And then at the very end, I will show an example on uh, what we provide to our clients in a security audit report. And we will wrap it up with a short Q&A session. So first, let me do a very short introduction to our company so that you know who we are and what we do. So Biosyn is a leading global blockchain security company. Uh, we are founded by several professors from world-renowned universities. The team consists of uh, more than 100 security experts, uh, whereas uh, more than 40 of us are PhDs and postdocs. So we have very strong expertise in uh, cybersecurity. We have audited more than 2,000 smart contracts and more than 50 different public blockchains worldwide and successfully protected nearly 10 billion USD worth of digital assets and recognized by global market leaders. So let's jump into smart contract attacks. We had quite good coverage of attacks during the last presentation. So as we know, smart contract put uh, laws into code. It brings us trust, economy, efficiency, and many other benefits. It is widely used in digital payment, digital asset management, multi-signature contracts, cloud computing, decentralized organizations, and more. It brings us benefits, but it also introduces new risks. There has been many cybersecurity issues in smart contracts, resulting in digital assets, aggregate of billions of US dollars being stolen or lost. Especially in 2021 and uh, last year, with the popularity of decentralized finance, uh, we see more digital assets being managed directly by smart contracts. So this also introduces uh, and a higher incentive for hackers to uh, try to attack these, uh, these smart contracts. A few examples that we saw last year was Poly Network, Cream Finance and Compound. With Poly Network losing more than $600 million and both Cream Finance and Combo Compound losing more than 100 million each. And as you can see here, each of them were attacked by taking advantage of completely different vulnerabilities. It's sort of puts emphasis on the importance of doing rigorous security auditing to find vulnerabilities before deploying smart contracts onto the chain. On this slide, you can see that the decentralized finance related events uh, rise quickly. And as mentioned, it's uh, much, much because of uh, more digital assets being managed directly through smart contracts and the incentive it, it brings in turn for bad actors to perform attacks. So while uh, smart contracts do deliver value, a very small bug can result in huge losses. Smart contracts cannot be modified directly after deployed. So that means that if the code has bugs or any faults, then it is likely to be exploited sooner or later. Smart contracts have a very low fault tolerance rate. So here are some of the risks 
issues in smart contracts that differ from uh, traditional software applications that the developers might be more familiar with. It's basically new attack vectors that we need to keep in mind. And first one is that defect defects are hard to fix. So blockchains are decentralized and tamper-proof. Smart contracts cannot be modified uh, after they have been submitted to the chain. If a defect exists in a smart contract, then it will also persist. There is no way to shut down the servers or revert data changes as you may be used to in traditional software. Another added risk is that public blockchains are open system. Uh, anyone can view and interact with the code in the blockchain after it is deployed. Contract transactions and data may be visible to counterparties. So this leads to the fact that uh, smart contract vulnerabilities are relatively easy to identify and exploit, as anyone can read the source code directly. At the same time, running uh, smart contracts, the data stored on the chain is publicly vis accessible for anyone. So privacy and other sensitive data leakage should be prevented when dealing with private data. We also need to acknowledge that there is immaturity in blockchain platforms and smart contract language. Distributed application development is uh, different from traditional application development. Developers of distributed applications need to have a thorough understanding of operations on the blockchain. Otherwise, the intention of the developers will be inconsistent with the actual execution of the smart contracts. So in addition, the current common blockchain platforms are constantly developing and evolving and upgrading. So various functions will change as the version changes. So when you upgrade a platform, you need to evaluate the difference between the original smart contract and the new version of the platform to make appropriate adjustments and to avoid security risks. This is also coupled with the lack of security awareness uh, and smart the contract development experience of software developers. So many software developers are very familiar with traditional software security, but with limited experience in developing smart contracts, there are many attack surfaces that they are not aware of, and also in how the compiled code will actually perform in, in the live environment. And it's also about the habit of uh, asking for a professional third-party audit, which is some, some, somewhat lacking in, in the smart contract development industry as well. It is also related to digital asset. Uh, so smart contracts are used to store and move digital assets with a monetary value, and that value can be quite significant, especially, especially in the centralized finance Security issues in smart contracts can lead to big financial losses, both, both for the deployer of the contract and for the application users. So as a result, the risk of security problems in a smart contract is typically greater than what you see in traditional applications, where transactions most often can be reverted. And on public blockchains, uh, transactions are public, of course, but the ownership is anonymous, so you will rarely be able to trace down the attacker if something would happen. So con continuing on sources of uh, risk, as we mentioned, the code is often open source and available to anyone. And this generates uh, attack surfaces that we might not be used to. It attracts more hackers when the, the incentive to attack a smart contract increases in monetary value. Uh, and it, it's worth to mention also that it attracts uh, hackers both with good intentions and malicious intentions. So there are many white hackers out there as well that want to help, uh, help the industry, but there are also many hackers with malicious intentions. So we want to make sure before we deploy a smart contract that it is secure. And here are some of the 
common vulnerabilities that we see when working with smart contract auditing. We have reentrancy attacks, integer overflow attacks, parameter manipulation, self-destruct attacks, and incorrect token output calculations. We had a quite thorough walkthrough of different attacks in the last presentation here. So maybe I just mentioned two of these and how they usually end up in smart contracts and how they are attacked. So the first one is as a re-entrancy attack, and that's basically a way to invoke smart contracts in, in a manner which would give the attacker uh, more access than he should have. And we can do a very simple example. So smart contracts need to implement checks in, in their function to confirm that the person who invoked the contract have the correct privileges. And this often needs to be done several times when interacting with a smart contract. A very simple example would be, uh, uh, let's say just transferring a token. So if the user is invoking the smart contract, then there will be a check at accessing the smart contract if the user have sufficient funds or not. But let's say that there is only a check when accessing the smart contract and not an extra check when actually sending the tokens, then this could be abused by the uh, attacker invoking it, the, the smart contract several times without sending the tokens, basically passing the first check on how much uh, funds that the account has available. And if there is not that extra check at sending time, then the attacker could send the transaction, uh, several transactions at the same time because the first check is already passed and thus of overdrafting his actual balance and draining the smart contract. And this is a very simplified example. There are much more complex interactions where you have smart contracts interacting with each other and more complex interaction in, in access rights. And then we also have uh, integer overflow attacks, which most developers are familiar with. And this is also a big issue in smart contracts because in smart contracts, we want to uh, optimize the, the gas usage. So variables will be assigned uh, the minimum size that they need to have for the, for the contract to operate correctly. That means that overflow and underflow needs to be taken into particular consideration. Basically, it means that if you do operations on integers within the smart contract and it uh, gets manipulated to, uh, to above the maximum integer value, then the integer will restart at the minimum value or the other way around an underflow on the minimum value into the maximum value. And this can be used to manipulate the access right and token balances and and uh, accessible funds to the attacker this is also something to take into particular considerations and all, all of these attacks and vulnerabilities written here are are vulnerabilities that are difficult to identify by just reading the code they are not that straightforward to see unless you do a very thorough security audit and there are many more uh, attacks than, than these. So to mitigate these uh, attacks, we need professional security auditors and automatic scanning tools. So we have developed our own uh, tool here at Biosyn called the Biosyn Verification as a Service or VAS as short. And I would like to show you a very uh, a demo on what it looks like and how easy it is to use and it is free to all developers to use as well so if you are interested in just running your smart contract through this platform then you can uh, do that as well so let me just see if i can open up uh, my sharing screen here and if i may ask the host to switch over to the uh, shared screen uh, right now and get an indication that it is correct So 
can the, the host, can you please uh, switch over to uh, my shared screen, the browser? Thank you, thank you. Here you have our homepage. You can access it by just navigating to biosyn.com. And this is the this is the site that you will see when accessing our website. And here you can click on our platform verification as a service. And you can try it out for free by clicking this button here. You will come to the login screen and let me see, I have my login information already entered onto the screen and the verification code is just to calculate the little math problem that you have in the screen there and login. And this is how the platform looks like. You will have the source code in the middle and some settings that you can set in the in the right side of the screen and smart contracts on the left side. So here we have a smart contract on a regular ERC20 token. Uh, at first sight, it might it might look quite ordinary. There's nothing strange. It has the transfer function. It has balance of approval and so forth. So the first thing we want to do is to look at the version that this smart contract is written in. So this 0 0.4.24. And so we want to tell the verification as a service tool to compile this code at the same version or slightly above it. So we have a list of versions that we can compile in. And we do have the exact version here. So let's pick that one. And we also need to tell the compiler on what it should uh, do the verification on. So we want to run it on this test token contract. So we will paste it in here. And then we simply click on the start detection and it will take a few seconds to run this verification. So let's just hang on a bit and see what the result will be. And here we received very quickly a full list of vulnerabilities in this contract. So for example, we can see block parameter manipulation here. So you can just click whatever vulnerability that is fine and it will display it directly in the source code with a short feedback down, down below. We can see uh, an integer underflow, which we talked a little bit about over here. We can see an integer overflow, two of them over here. We can see a possibility for the contract to be invoked with self-destruct here. We see a re-entrancy or possible re-entrancy vulnerability here. So even though at first sight, if you do a manual audit on this code, everything might look that it's perfectly fine. But by using our developed uh, verification as a service tool, you can easily see that there actually do exist quite some issues that you need to take a closer look at. And our tool is updated uh, continuously. So as soon as there are new vulnerabilities found by the, the blockchain community, those are added to our tool as well. So we can rerun the platform both on old and new code to also check against the new vulnerabilities that are found. Okay, so let's switch back to the presentation again, the PPT. Thank you. And then we also have unknown uh, interaction vulnerabilities. So that's more complex uh, interaction between different uh, smart contracts that might not, may, might, may not be that uh, straightforward to find if you just look at a simple app or a single application individually, but where you need to take into consider, consideration how the smart contract and the application interacts with other applications. And this is quite common also in decentralized finance where you have many different DeFi protocols that can interact with it, each other. For example, you have these uh, lending protocols and you have decentralized exchanges. Uh, you have also 
and leverage uh, trading directly on chain and so forth. So to give an example on the complexity of this, we will look at one of the attacks that were done last year, which was a flash loan attack. Uh, this is a graph to illustrate how that flash loan uh, went through. And it was quite complex to, to, uh, to identify and the attacker was quite creative in perform or constructing this scenario. So this, this is a constructed scenario that the, act, the attacker thought of. It started out by the attacker uh, lending, doing a flash loan. Oh, sorry, my, I, we may have to do a quick restart here again, sorry. The computer went black here again. Uh, I'm soon back again. Okay, I'm back. I apologize for that. Let's move on to the slide where we were at. So the issue that I'm having over here, just to bring everybody up to the same page, we have a small uh, overheating issue at the laptop. So the computer it's using quite a lot of uh, computer power uh, for this uh, presentation technology here. So the laptop uh, gives me a black screen when it gets too hot here. Hopefully that should be all, all problems uh, for this presentation, just so that you know what's happening. Okay, so to go back to the attack that we had, the attacker borrowed 10,000 USD from the DY, oh sorry, 10,000 Ethereum from the DYDX uh, protocol and uh, then they split it into oh, sorry and then they split it into two parts they sent one part to the compound protocol and another part to the bzx protocol on the compound protocol they used the ethereum to do a borrow against the uh, wrapped bitcoin and on the bzx protocol they did a similar thing but they they used the Ethereum to take a leverage short position against wrapped Bitcoin. So they actually received uh, a value five times the worth of 
their Ethereum in, in wrapped Bitcoin instead. So they leverage the flash loan of 10,000 Ethereum to get an even larger amount of wrapped Bitcoin. They transfer this wrapped Bitcoin to uh, the Kyber network to, to trade it against uh, Ethereum. And the, the small, mm, well, not so small issue that the attacker took advantage of here was that the liquidity of the Kyber network at that point in time were uh, relatively low. So there was a hot, there was a quite big slippage when trading wrapped Bitcoin against Ethereum. And Uniswap also takes its price feed from the Kyber network, sort of like part of its Oracle to set the trading uh, rates between wrapped Bitcoin and Ethereum. And Uniswap liquidity uh, at that time was, was very, very good. So the attacker, uh, since he himself or her herself knew that the Kyber network slippage would affect the temporarily to affect the trading rate at Uniswap, he took advantage of that short time window to uh, trade back his wrapped Bitcoin into Ethereum and thus gain more Ethereum than uh, than the wrapped Bitcoin actually was worth much because of the Kyber network slippage. And then he could just simply uh, trade these uh, or return the Ethereum he borrowed back again and end up with a profit of 1,271 Ethereum. So this is a quite complex uh, uh, scenario and constructed scenario from the attacker's side where he knew that if he took advantage of these, these steps, then he could uh, end up with a profit on the cost of the protocols. All right, so that's where we at Biosyn come into the picture. We are a professional blockchain security company and we fill in the gap between smart contract uh, expertise and uh, smart contract audits. So we have audited more than 2,000 contracts. Uh, as we mentioned, we have more than 100 security experts, whereas more than 40 of us are PhDs and postdocs. So we are experts in all of these common vulnerabilities. Uh, as mentioned, our verification as a service tool gets updated with, with new attacks. Uh, it's easy to get an overview of what vulnerabilities there are. We are experts in dynamic vulnerabilities. So for example, function visibility, contract limit bypass, call stack, call stack exhaustion. And all of these are also included in our verification as a service platform. And lastly, we are experts in formal verification. And this is a quality assurance method that is used in uh, most critical systems. So for example, the Mars probe control module and in many con metro control systems. It's a very, very rigorous testing for uh, quality assurance. And we stand out by having our own in-house experts in formal verification. So what we do is of course, we, we have these uh, different tools we can use to, uh, to make sure that the contract is secure. We have the static analysis and scanning, which is fast, but it is prone to fal false positives. So as you can see in the small demo before, we get a list on possible vulnerabilities, but it could be false positives. So we need to have our own experts to go through this, uh, this report and all the issues one by one to, to, to confirm the issues reported. Uh, we're also experts at dynamic analysis and testing. So that one is, is very precise. And by looking at the runtime, we can see how the, the code, the contract code actually executes. And thus we can easily fi find these uh, uh, positives. Uh, but on the other hand, it gives false negatives. So just because we can ensure that the execution is running correctly, it's, cannot be said that there 100% does not exist any, any vulnerabilities whatsoever. So that's why we also have this formal verification, which is very rigorous. It's to prove correctness. 
So it's consistency between the design requirements and the implementation. It's a mathematical method. A uh, formal verification can effectively determine whether the code of a program is correct. And correct in this, uh, in this instance means that the program runs completely as expected. That then actually ensuring completely that there is not a single unexpected execution path. That's also one of the areas where our company really stands out by being experts in this area. So why do we need to do these uh, formal verifications? Well, the flash loan attack that was explained uh, uh, just, just uh, recently, we can see that there can be maliciously constructed scenarios that we cannot see by looking at just the, the code itself. And there could be errors triggered by a large number of what we call impossible events. So events that cannot happen, but if the situation changes through some, some unexpected scenario, then, uh, then these uh, vulnerabilities can suddenly occur. Uh, I will show you a short example on that also in a little while, also using our verification as a service tool. So um, by using formal verification, we provide a complete coverage of all the boundary conditions and without to first have to manually identify all the possible test scenarios or test, test, test cases. And it proves that the actual execution of the program means the, meets the expected behavior. It's beyond way beyond what specified test cases can provide. So normally when you, pro when you construct test cases, you will have specified scenarios around the, the boundary constraints to see that the, the program will perform as expected around these constraints. Whereas in formal verification, we will actually test every single uh, input that's possible and confirm that that uh, satisfied satisfy the, the specification. It's a little bit similar to fuzzing, but uh, it's better than fuzzing since it's not random generation, it's actually complete coverage. And as mentioned, the testing methodology is so rigorous that it's used that the key quality assurance in the Mars probe control module in Metro control systems and it's also the main quality assurance uh, methodology used in Microsoft. So let's do an illustration of how it works with formal verification. The first and hardest step is to actually write the formal specification, uh, the, the specification block in the top left part here. And that's where why we have our own formal verification experts in house here to write these specifications for our clients. And this specification is what the code is supposed to do and uh, not on how, it's, how it does it. So it looks not too much on the implementation, but actually on what the code, the code is supposed to do. And these properties will be described in uh, rigorous math logic. Then on the second step, these specifications are added to the smart contract code as an assertion and we can add it to our verification as a service platform to verify the code against the specifications and uh, most often more often than not when we do these verifications we will we will find bugs in the code it happens more often than not it means the, so this visualizes the importance of doing a formal verification and then of course we have sufficient time to to fix these issues during the course of the project and when fixed we can run it again and the solutions will also be proved correctly by this formal verification so it's it's a sort of a peace of mind for the developers to prove that the behavior completely meets the specification so let's let, let's take a look at an actual code snippet here 
So this is uh, from a game on Ethereum. It's uh, two wizards that can duel each other. And the, the basic idea on, on the, the duels are that the, the winner will, if they defeat the opponent, the winner will take the power from the wizard. So each wizard have their own unique power. Uh, some wizards have multiple powers. And once they defeat the opponent, they will inherit the power of the opponent and the opponent will be completely removed from the game. So the winners of the duels will get uh, more and more powerful as they gain more and more powers. And when this game was uh, released on Ethereum, uh, it, there occurred uh, some unknown logic flaw. So it turns out that someone on, on playing this game were uh, wiping out the game assets. So both wizards and powers were being removed from the game completely, which shouldn't be possible. And to find out how this happened, we added uh, our formal verification uh, across the whole game uh, and across all the smart contracts on the game. So we will take a look here at this particular code snippet, which is one of the snippets where we did this formal verification. And this snippet is called resolve time.jewel. It's used to handle the result if there is a timeout in the battle. So what we need uh, to do here is to uh, ensure that the, the functionality or the bounded resource is correct. So we don't really care too much on how it's implemented here, but the bounded resource needs to be uh, proved correct. And the bounded resource in this particular example is to make sure that powers cannot be created out of thin air. And they can also not disappear uh, without uh, being transferred to a new wizard. So that's why we added this assertion at the bottom here at this page to, to ensure that the, the powers of the wizards that enter the game uh, need to uh, also exist after the game. So by, let's go back. So by adding this small assertion, let's see how it looks like in our platform. So let's share the screen again. And if uh, the host can help me to switch over to the browser again, thank you. Here we have the code that was at the presentation, the same same, uh, same game. So we will do the same thing here again. We will, we, will, oh, we will copy the name of the contract into the right side of the picture here. And we will look at the version number of the smart contract and choose the correct version. We can actually choose the latest version here. And as you can see, we have added the bounded resource at the bottom here to see is if there is any assertion errors in these code snippets. And as mentioned, these assertions will be done in all the functions and all the smart contracts across the whole, uh, whole game to confirm that there are, and uh, the all bounded city resources are correct. So it's uh, running a detection right now and we receive an assertion error. It shows that this assertion is not correct. There are some scenarios where this will not be fulfilled. So this is where we need to go and look into detail into the, the code snippets. And once our security auditors did go into this code and looked into detail, they found the edge case that if the two duels or if the two wizards that were provided into into uh, this, this function were the same wizard. So if the wizard one equals wizard two, so the wizard duel himself, more or less, then you will end up in a situation where the winner gains his power from himself. Uh, and then he also removes himself from the, from the game completely. And when he removes himself from the game, then the power is also removed from the game. 
uh, that means that this assertion will not be fulfilled. And to fix these security issues, what we need to do is add this line of code here. Require that the two wizards that duel each other is not the same wizard. And then we can go back and we can do the same thing again. We add this line of code and we run the detection and we see if uh, our assertion is fixed here. And there we go, no issue detected. So not only can we see uh, when there is uh, an, a bug in the, con in the code, we can also actually confirm the exist that the existence, the non-existence of bugs by having these formal verification and assertions on the bounded resources. All right, so let's move back to the presentation again. Thank you. So let's uh, take an overview of the security audits that we do here at Busin and uh, the process that we go through. We always start our audits by doing a framework audit. So based on the project design and the project source, we analyze the functionality implemented on the project level to judge whether there is any unreasonable functionality or any security risk at design level. Then we run the automatic formal verification that we showed, uh, our own developed tool. And we have our security experts here in-house that manually confirm all the results in our automatic uh, scanning. Then we do a complete manual code audit so this complete manual code audit is a white box going through everything that the client provides to us, all the code directly source code. And this single step here, the manual code audit, audit is often the only thing that competitors do. So you can see that we have a quite rigorous process here at Biosyn with added steps to confirm that the smart contract code is secure for our clients. And uh, in this automatic formal verification, we, we do all of these steps previously mentioned, of course. We do the static scanning, we do the dynamic testing, and we do the formal verification. All the vulnerabilities are reported in the last step to our clients, together with suggestions on how these vulnerabilities can be fixed. And after we have delivered the report, there is uh, sort of a, a loop and iterations between the client and us where the client can fix the vulnerabilities according to our feedback and then return the fixed solution to us for to us for confirmation we see if there is any outstanding vulnerabilities and confirm that the fixes is is correct if there is anything more that needs to be added we send it back to client again with suggested improvements and it goes back and forth until the client is satisfied we split our audits into three categories to make it easy for our clients and that's coding conventions, general vulnerabilities and business logic issues. And this also makes it easy for the client to uh, divide the workload across their own developers. Here is a brief overview on the results that our clients will receive. Uh, just to first emphasize once more, we have audited more than 2000 smart contracts. So we are very familiar with the common vulnerabilities that exist in, in smart contracts and also experts on the formal verification to make sure that the, the business logic is correct all over the client's code. So this example here, this, uh, this table is from uh, uh, the centralized ex exchange and staking project. So during this particular audit process, we, we found 11 problems from the business design level to the 
code security level. And these problems uh, could lead to the this complete destruction of the project ledger. It could lead to the loss of user found and it could lead to theft of the project, fu project funds. So this is, this is why a third party security audit is, is really necessary to do. And these findings, of course, were uh, reported to, uh, to our clients with an easy to easy overview on the impact from critical, high, medium, low, and info. And the project, of course, or the, uh, the whole report includes, of course, a detailed um, the instruction on how these vulnerabilities can be fixed as well. And uh, just to clarify once more, it doesn't end when we re uh, release this report to our clients. We work together with the client after the report to make sure that everything is fixed to the client's satisfaction. And here is also an example on audit service for public blockchains. So we are not only experts on smart contracts, we are also experts on complete blockchain platforms. We have done security audits for more than 50 different public blockchain platforms. And example on projects like that would be uh, Avalanche or Solana. So the complete, the actual complete blockchain, uh, blockchain's uh, core code. The audit reports will differ a little bit on the categories that we report on, and you can see an example here. So if you are a public blockchain that's also looking for to have a professional security audit, then feel free to reach out to us as well, because we can provide to you a very rigorous security audit on, on that as well. And once more to go back to our advantages and why we are so good at providing security for our clients. As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we have secured uh, digital assets more worth more than 10 billion USD. So that's something that we should be proud of, I believe. We have audited more than 2000 smart contract and uh, in all kind of different characteristics, for example, the centralized finance, NFTs, GameFi projects. We have uh, one of the world's top security teams. We have the world leading BIOSIN BIOS verification as a service smart contract platform, uh, which I strongly suggest you to test out. It's free to use, so you can find it through our website and, and try it out. So we are able to provide these professional security audits through both our self-developed tools and through our professional security team uh, to add this manual aspect of the security audits as, as well. And once again, I'd like to stress that we use this formal verification methodology. The same methodology is that is used in, in uh, critical control systems. Again, as in Mars probe control module and, and metro systems around the world. And here is an overview of clients and audited projects, projects that we have served. So we are a trusted security company in this blockchain ecosystem. So feel free to reach out to us uh, if you have any security concerns or just want to confirm that your smart contracts and blockchain platforms are secure, we can help you out and we will be very happy to do so. You can contact us through email or you can reach out to us through social media, Twitter and Telegram, where you can find the links here. And you can, of course, also find all the necessary links on our website, biosyn.com. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have right now as well. Thank you, Milcom, for, you know, everything. So this session is really great. And we do have a question from YouTube. Uh, 
viewer name snaps um right oh um i think it's very relevant because he's i think he's asking for a job from you guys but that's fine so um i personally have a question so in your opinion why do you think even though auditors and audit reports for projects is getting common the level of exploits and smart contract vulnerabilities has not really gone down since then so sorry i think you muted I think that's, uh, that's several aspects to take into that consideration well first of all the youtube question asking for you feel free to reach out to us we we are growing uh, quickly and we need more people all across the globe so if you are interested to join then send an email uh, of course and regarding why companies are reaching out for security audits but still the number of attacks and stolen funds are increasing there are several um, reasons for that uh, one of the reasons is also as mentioned in the earlier earlier in the presentation that we see decentralized finance growing so quickly right now uh, there's so much money and increasing amount of money being managed directly by smart contracts so it's very uh, attractive for for malicious hackers to to pull together their resources to try to steal these funds so the the incentive is is very much there and it's also relatively easy to to confirm whether or not an attack will work or not because most or if not all of the code is is already open source another reason is uh, the immaturity of uh, security audits uh, in this industry so as mentioned also earlier many many of the security auditors only do uh, a manual audit on the code itself and that's not sufficient to to find all of these attack surfaces because these smart contracts are, are very complex and the interactions between smart contracts is not always that easy to see and uh, also if many of these security auditors they have they have good they have good expertise from traditional cybersecurity, but that's very different from smart contracts smart contracts compile differently than than your traditional software so you really need to have security auditors that are experts in in blockchain and smart contracts in order to uh, in order to find all of these uh, these uh, security issues so so that's why why we are so so good at what we do and we apply this formal formal verification as well which our clients so far have been very uh, appreciative of so most of our new clients is actually from from client recommendations it's uh, it's clients that are very satisfied with our re results and recommend us to, to new projects that that reach out to us so that's that's currently the way that we're going fastest at the moment thank you, thank you Malcolm. so i do have another question i think we have enough time for that so in this fast moving space how do you think projects auditors and participants in the space should keep themselves updated with the potential um, breakthrough with you know security reason all I think that's very hard for individual projects to keep themselves updated on security vulnerabilities and security threats. It's really a full-time job for a full security team to, to be able to do that. I think the best thing that project can do is to do uh, uh, at least frequently security audits and it doesn't have to be you know once per week but it should at least be scheduled security audits it could be once per quarter or something like that to keep themselves updated that there isn't any security vulnerabilities especially every time their smart contract is upgraded they should do a new security audit or every time there is a new solidity version released they, they should make sure that uh, none of the functionalities in the current smart contracts is affected by, by the upgrades and that can be done through reaching out to, to us of course they can also uh, run the just our our tool that we have on our website that is free to use they can clients can run that for free every once in a while if they just want to have a quick feedback on on the current status that sounds good 
So, um, right, I think we are just right on time. And we, yeah, thank you for this insightful session. So are there any parting words you have for the community? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this time. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, thank you for uh, having us on this uh, developer bootcamp. And uh, apologize once again for the, the, the technical issues we had two times during this presentation. And I hope it didn't uh, disturb too much of, uh, of your time. Yeah, thank all of you. Thank you so much. Have a good day, guys.